Hello everyone, welcome back once again. Today we are going to learn NAT concepts. So in the previous session we learned about the security policies. Once we are quite good with the security policies, we want to move towards NAT and I want to tell you that how NAT is configured in Palo Alto Firewall. But uh, before going to practically being configured in the firewall, I want to tell you that what is theory running behind this NAT and why exactly we need NAT. So the first question comes like uh, why NAT is important, right? So this is going to be a theory session and next session will be on the practical demonstration I will take because if I take it to together then it is going to be a bit long so the very first question that why do we need NAT so the answer of this question is behind the concept of IPv4 and IPv6 right you know that there are two versions of, of IPv4 and IPv6 <coughs> so you know the story and if you don't know then let me tell you the story that uh, in IPv4 version uh, that is a 32 bit address and with that 32 bit address it was not possible to get IP address for everybody in the earth means that our IP addresses were limited it was not possible to give IP address to all now the the problem was come that internet was evolving and every user whatever the uh, like uh, if you are a normal person uh, you are uh, using a laptop and then you are also using a phone you might be using an IP TV or you can say the smart TV and every uh, these equipments need an IP address and even if that is a large enterprise they might having you know thousands of cameras installed in their premises and uh, every cameras need a IP address so the problem was that in even a single user was using multiple IP addresses and these IP addresses were going to be ended the solution was uh, to switch to IPv6 but uh, all these uh, hardware devices were not supporting right whatever the hardware we have implemented till now uh, those were not uh, comfort comfortable with the IPv6 address so they need some modification to support this IPv6 address so uh, now now the problem was that how to move forward because the IP, IPv4 addresses were limited and we are not able to use internet so the solution was to this one that <coughs> we use the concept of NAT and that stands for Network Address Translation. So what happened that uh, we used two types of IP addresses. The first of the IP address was private IP address. Let me change the color. Uh, the first was the private IP address. And another type of was the public IP address. And if you are good in the CCNA, then you might be uh, good at it, public IP. Because these are the concepts of the CCNA, but I'm just, I'm you no know, getting you going through once again. Because if I do not tell you and you don't know, then you are not able to configure the NAT in the firewall. And then my session will be uh, waste. So that's why I'm telling you these things once again. So the private IP address ranges uh, from every uh, subnet. There is starts from class A 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0 to 10.255.255.255.255. .255 .255 .255. Something and 172 dots. That is a class A. So in every class we are having the private IP addresses and uh, public IP addresses so these whatever I am telling you these are the private IP address range and these are the private and you know it right and if you don't know that just uh, search in the Google you will just get everything 16.0.0 from here to 172.16.255.255.255 and same thing is with the class C IP address they starts from 192.168 
dot one dot zero two that's all so uh, 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 beyond that one uh, that is up to this range only and after that 193 it's the start of the public ip address so only these ranges are private x out of this range everything is public ip address so what we are using let me clear it out clear all So what we uh, use normally that uh, let us suppose this is an enterprise network. So here the, we are having the multiple computers. So inside the enterprise, whatever the user it will be, they will be using the private IP address. Private IP address means they can be using like 10.1.1.1. Similarly, it might be like this is an enterprise one enterprise a similarly an enterprise b can be and that can be also having multiple computers but that can be using the same ip address they can reuse these ip address let us suppose this guy is also using 10.1.1.1 so this was the benefit of using the range of private ip address and public ip address now this is just happening in the private world like this is within the enterprise whenever we are you are inside the enterprise then only you are using the private ip address but what happens that when you are going to the outside you want to access the internet so what is happening now this private ip address was translated to some other ip address let us suppose it is being translated to 20.20.20 .20 .20. So whenever inside it is using, it is using this IP address. Whenever it is communicating from uh, this machine, so it will use this IP. But if it is going out of enterprise and uh, communicating with uh, another user, any web server, right? Let us suppose this is in a Google server. And if we want to communicate with the, any of the Google server or gmail.com, then he will use this IP and then it will go to google server but the problem uh, st uh, st remains the same right there now if you think of this one there are uh, three types of the translation that is a static another thing was a dynamic and next thing is our port address translation now and sometimes we also call it as a path so what happens with the static uh, in case of static ip to ip mapping was done statically we uh, define it that if this user 10.1.1 wants to go to the internet it is like uh, we are having the table here that 10.1.1.1 if it is going to the internet he will statically use 20.20.20.20 .20 .20 .20 .20 to the go to the internet if 10.1.1.1 2 wants to go to the internet he will use 20 dot 20 dot 20 dot 21 to go to the internet and then he can go to the internet but the problem was this uh, use with this ip to ip mapping that whatever the benefit we were thinking of saving the ip addresses that was not working right we were having one ip address and again we are reserving one of the ip addresses so this uh, thing was not so uh, popular in fact we can say that it was not uh, giving the proper results so what uh, happened we went to the dynamic so in case of the dynamic what happened we uh, took the let me change some other colors okay let me take green so in the case of dynamic what happened uh, they had some pool it means that uh, let us suppose we are having three members let me clear it i don't have the space now so uh, what happened that uh, uh, let us suppose we are having 10 users from 10.1.1.0 to 10.1.1.1.1 continuously 10.1.1.1.10 so these are 10 members of one enterprise 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 means we have one company right so enterprise a and that is having 10 computers and they want to go to the internet now what happens that we are having the reserve pool of five ip addresses 
it could be like 20 dot 20, 1 dot 1 dot 1 dot 1 20.1.1.2 dot continuously it might be up to 5 ip addresses only 20.1.1.1.5 so <clears throat> in dynamic mapping what was happening that if this user the first user wants to go to the internet it comes this it takes one ip address and go to the internet now one ip address uh, this is the public ip address and the first one is our enterprise is private so our one of the ip address is utilized now this user wants to go to the internet he use this ip address and goes to the internet benefit of this uh, was let us suppose any uh, of the day or the during the time one of the member 10.1.1.1 in in this case what was happening only five users from this machine can go to the internet because we are having the available pool of only five members but the benefit of this was like uh, we don't have a static mapping so if any of the user is absent here then another user let us suppose this guy he can use any available ip address and go to the internet what was the problem with the static if one we done the mapping from zero to one uh, let us suppose leave zero uh, one to one mapping is done and 1.2 was assigned to this 1.3 designed to this 1.4 assigned to this 1.5 to assign to this now users from remaining ip addresses 1.6 1.7 1.8 1.9 1.10 we don't have any static mapping for that one and they will uh, never go to the internet but it's still the problem somewhat solved but it was not completely resolved the solution of this was basically which was saving the internet that was patched that was port address translation what happens in the pad any of the user who is having 10.1.1.1 10.1.1.2 10.1.1.3 it can be multiple IP addresses 10.1.1.100 and now they want to go to the internet so what happened uh, they we took just one IP address let us suppose 20.20.20 .20 .20. and if this user wants to go to the internet then what is going to happen we take this user like this it goes to the internet but what happens that while goes uh, going to the internet it changes the port so going to the internet it uses this type of thing 20.20.20 .20 and then at the end it uses this column and uses some port number let us support is using the port number 6321 now if when this user wants to go to internet it will use the same ip address of this pool but at the end it will use some other port number 20.20.20 .20 .20 colon 6322 these ports are the random ports which are picked while going to the internet or going to the outside uh, it might not always happen to the internet but whenever it happens it takes any random port and goes to the internet so again if it this wants to go it will take 20.20.20 .20 .20 and uh, take some random port 65432 right and it will go to the internet so if you observe that we are using only one ip address at this time and uh, we, you know that the port numbers are from uh, 0 to uh, 65,536 something, right? While uh, port uh, from up to 1,000s are reserved. But still we are having around 64,000 or 63,000 ports available. For the exact count, you can search on the Wikipedia. Uh, there's a lot of information about these port numbers. So uh, we, with the help of one, uh, this public IP address, we can uh, use the 64 around 64,000 uh, users to go to the internet so this was basically saving the internet so uh, it, it was decided that whoever is assigned this public ip address they will be charged 
uh, you pay for this public IP address allocation and the private IP addresses can be used by anyone free of cost. If you are at, you are at home, you can use any of the private IP addresses. But in fact, if you are not in the internet, uh, you can use these public IP addresses as well because you are at your home, you are not exposed to the internet. Nobody is stopping, right? Uh, nobody knows that which IP addresses are you, you, you are using. So that's what it is uh, about the NAT. So if you observe uh, this time that uh, uh, we are having the three types of uh, NAT. The first one was like static NAT. Another was, was uh, dynamic. And the third type of NAT was uh, NAT overload. And some of the user also call it as a PAT. These are the types of NAT uh, whenever uh, we are uh, translating, like right? these are the types of translation we can say. But uh, it, if you observe that uh, it is translating the source IP address, right? Whatever the source IP address was, that was translated. So uh, we can you can say it was happening a source NAT because source NAT was translated. But if there is a requirement and there is sometimes requirement that we translate the destination IP address at, as well. And that normally happens with the destination server. So this is also available source NAT and destination NAT. We will learn these as well while doing practicals. Another type of <coughs> Uh, thing like uh, if you talk about the benefits of NAT so one of the benefit of NAT like uh, reusable IP addresses we can say right another thing is like for the security purpose like whatever w whenever there is a NAT uh, our private IP address is not exposed to the internet right so this is an end enterprise i am using 10.1.1 when i am going to the internet if somebody is here he is just tracking my traffic like he is not a, uh, he is a bad guy here right so uh, if he is tapping my traffic and he is observing he will see only my public ip address 20.20.20.20 .20 .20 .20. And if he tries to access my machine, he cannot, right? Because he cannot uh, know, he don't know my private IP address. So another reason of this thing is like security. Third thing we use at the destination and can be used as a load balancing as well. But that does not, uh, no, really used. Uh, we are having lot of load balancers available. So we take their help. But if you are like. Uh, cheap company <laughs> right you want to save money then you can uh, get this thing uh, via the NAT as well you can do load balancing based on the IP addresses so this was it about the NAT and uh, next session I will be covering up about the practical sessions that how these uh, static dynamic NAT are configured in Palo Alto firewalls and we will also focus on the source NAT and destination NAT and uh, if you like all this just uh, uh, keep in touch with me and if you have any doubt reach me anytime thank you guys see you soon bye bye